Let us do today another example of reduction in smelting that is production of zinc and this is in fact the process is imperial smelting process. Imperial smelting process. Now, this process utilizes zinc concentrate and reduction smelting is done in a single reactor. The reduction smelting is done in a single reactor and that is called zinc blast furnace. So, today I will be illustrating a problem on imperial smelting process and in fact material balance in imperial smelting process. So, material balance in imperial smelting process. Now, in an imperial smelting process in an imperial first I will write down the problem smelting process the center consists of fifty percent zinc oxide, twenty percent lead oxide, twenty percent FeO and ten percent SiO2. The coke is regarded for this problem as amorphous carbon. Though it may have certain impurities, but for the illustration I am considering it contains pure carbon. Now, condition all Z and O is reduced to zinc vapor and lead oxide to liquid lead liquid lead whereas feo and sio2 form a molten slag form a molten slag the gas after reduction after reduction contains 7 volume percent zinc and CO2 upon CO ratio that is equal to 0.5. What you have to do make a material balance make a material balance of the process and calculate and calculate weight of carbon and volume of air and composition of gas. Second, make heat balance. Now, about the respective input and output temperatures as required for heat balance, I will give at the time when I will be illustrating the heat balance. So, as I have said, the first thing you have to consider is so called mass balance or material balance you have to do in order to go to the heat balance. Now, this is a typical zinc blast furnace. Now, here what you do air rather sometimes preheated air 
is injected through the two ears which are located on the circumference of the blast furnace. Now, this is the hearth, this is the hearth and on the hearth what you are having you have say this is the lead sorry this is the lead and this is slag because lead has a very high density. So, it will be sinking and slag on the top and here you have a burden which is travelling downwards and burden consists of sinter plus coke. So, the burden is descending downward and the gases which are forming and the gases which are forming they travel upwards. So, this is the gases now mind you here the gases consist of zinc vapor plus CO plus CO2 plus nitrogen and if there is some excess oxygen that will also be there. So, here these gases they are taken out in a say this is the lead condenser. Now, these gases are shock cooled in order to recover zinc and then the gases CO, CO2, N2 and oxygen they are leaving the system. So, this is in short what I thought just to show you how the, the, the diagrammatic sketch of a blast furnace. Now, here lead and slag they are taped out and uh, they can be used for some purpose. So, that is how a typical zinc blast furnace look. Now, let us go for the material balance. In the material balance, let us consider 1000 kg center. Basis of calculation is 1000 kg center. You can make 1000, 1 ton, whatever you like. So, what I am doing now, the input, this is zinc oxide this is lead oxide, this is FeO and here we have SiO2. So, the kg that is 500 kg, PbO 200, FeO 200 and SiO2 is 100. Now, what I am doing? I am converting into kg mole. Now, here I am using the atomic weight of zinc 65, lead 207, iron 56 and silicon 28. Of course, I do not need to say oxygen is 16. So, just I divide kilogram by their uh, molecular weight. So, I get kg mole. So, here I am writing kg mole 6.173, and 1.667. Uh, now, the problem does not say what is the amount of air that is being used. All that it says that the gas after reduction contains 7 percent or 7 volume percent of zinc and CO2 upon CO ratio has been given to be 0.5. The problem does not mention about the amount of air that is required to carry out the smelting reduction process. So, at this stage we do not know whether excess air is used or theoretical air is used. All that we know the some component of the exit gas that is exit gas here means the gases which are resulting due to reduction of ZNO and PBO at the heart level that just above the heart level. So, that is what the gases, gases in the conventional the top exit no it is not the top exit gas these are the gases which are forming above the heart level and a mixture of zinc, CO, CO2, N2 and oxygen they are travelling upward and as a result of traveling they are taken into a condenser and from the condenser then the gases go out of the system. 
So, let us now we know that there is no loss of zinc. The problem does not say any loss of zinc. That means, whatever zinc is being charged, the same should be available in the gas. So, that is a clue to start the problem. So, now let us consider, let us consider that y kg mole of gas is being formed, y kg mole of gas is formed. So, I will do now zinc balance. So, if I do zinc balance, then it is 0 0.07 y that is equal to 6.173. So, I get here y that is equal to 88.186. So, now the amount of gas which is forming due to reduction of ZNO and PBO above the hearth level, it is equal to 88.186 kg mole. Mind you, this is not the exit gas. By exit gas, I mean the gas leaving the condenser. No, it is not. It is the amount of gas that is forming above the hearth level due to reduction of ZNO and PBO. So, that is the important thing here. Now, we are also given that the CO2 CO ratio is 0.5. Now, we can write down the reduction equation by considering that CO, CO2 upon CO ratio, whatever is given, that reduction equation satisfies. So, from that we can proceed to calculate something. So, it is said that reduction of ZNO and PBO, reduction of ZNO and PBO, it occurs by carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide being produced C plus half O2 plus 3.76 N2 that is equal to CO plus 1.88 N2. That is how the carbon monoxide is produced. Now, I will be utilizing this particular equation and recognizing that the problem states CO2 upon CO ratio it gives some value. So, if I write down the reduction equation by maintaining the CO CO2 ratio as given in the problem, then, uh, uh, then I am proceeding in the right direction. So, let me write down now. So, I have 6.173 ZNO plus 3 into 6.173 CO plus 1.5 into 6.173 O2 plus 3.76 N2. Now, O2 plus 3.76 N2 that is 1 mole of air. So, that will give me 6.173 zinc vapor plus 6.173 CO2 gas plus 12.346 carbon monoxide plus 34.816 nitrogen. Now, you see in writing this particular equation, you should be clever enough that you maintain the exit ratio of whatever is given in the problem and accordingly you back calculate the requirement of CO to carry out the reaction as well as the oxygen requirement. Now, these are the important issue. So, this is the equation which must be taking place as per the condition of the problem below the heart level or sorry above the heart level. Similarly, now I can write down for lead oxide the 0 0.897 PBO plus 3 into 0 0.897 CO plus 1.5 into 0 0.897 O2 plus 3.76 N2 
that will be equal to 0 0.897 lead which is liquid plus 0 0.897 CO2 plus 1.794 CO plus 5.059 nitrogen. So, these are the reduction equation. Now, from the and there is no other uh, component which is being reduced from the center. The reducing component are ZNO and PBO, rest FeO and, and SiO2 they directly form the slag. So, from the above equation, from the above the gas consists of Zn vapor that is equal to 6.173 CO2 7.070 carbon monoxide 14.140 and nitrogen that is equal to 39.875 mind you they are all in kg moles. Now, a total of all this that is equal to 67.258 kg mole. Now, this 67.258 kg mole we have gotten as a result of writing the equation by maintaining the exit ratio of CO2 and CO. You remember just before we have calculated amount of gas which is producing above the hearth level was of the order of 88.186. That means, there is a difference. So, what is that difference? We have calculated amount of exit gas earlier 88.186. So, it follows, it follows that 88.186 minus 67.258, this difference that is equal to 20.93 kg mole. what this difference is. You know while writing down this equation, we have taken care of only the CO to CO exit ratio that is maintained. Now, the difference of 20.93 kg mole, it compels you to think that this comprise of only excess amount of air and there is nothing else in the system as per the statement of the problem. The problem does not say anything about the amount of air. So, this difference between the gas that you have determined from zinc balance and the gas which you have determined from CO to CO exit ratio and seeing the appropriate kg moles of ZNO and PBO, there is only possibility that 20.93 kg mole is excess air. So, what I wanted you to say is that you cannot take or you cannot presume right in the beginning that there is no excess air in the system. You have to make the calculation, you have to show that well there is no excess air in the system. So, here this calculation shows the system operates with excess amount of air equal to 20.93 kg mole and that is that this excess air contains O2 plus nitrogen both. Right? So, now from here we can determine now the excess oxygen. Now, here one should also be careful to determine the nitrogen part of it. Now, the nitrogen which were determined earlier was 39.875. We have determined nitrogen earlier, it was 39.875 and to determine that value of nitrogen, to determine nitrogen, you have to consider the oxygen from the chart because you have determined oxygen by multiplying 3.76. If all the oxygen would have been obtained from air, in that case we have multiplied by 3.76 and gotten 
that that is the amount of nitrogen but some amount of oxygen is also from the charge so according to the problem the oxygen required oxygen required from air that will be equal to 7.070 this is from c to co2 plus 7.070 this is from c to co and minus 3.535 now this is oxygen from charge this you have to determine zno and pbo considering that you get this is oxygen from charge so then the nitrogen would be 14.140 minus 3.535 into 3.76 and that is how we have gotten the figure 39.875 kg moles that is what i have shown just earlier that the nitrogen moles are 39.875 that is how you will be getting 39.875 moles now say this 20.93 is the excess air so accordingly excess oxygen would be excess oxygen would be say 4.40 kg mole that is 20.93 into 0.21 and then the excess nitrogen corresponding to excess oxygen i subtract 20.93 from uh, and minus 4.40 that will be excess nitrogen so that will be equal to 16.53 kg mole so now the composition of gas composition of gas forming above the hearth level now we can write down now say zinc vapor 6.173 co2 7.070 co 14.140 oxygen 4.40 and nitrogen you have to add 39.875 which you have determined earlier plus 16.53 which is due to the excess oxygen so the nitrogen is 56.405 mind you these values are all in kg moles so total is again 88.186 that is how the composition of exit gas would determine now once you know this then we can find out amount of air amount of air can you tell me how will you calculate because nitrogen from air that will be available nitrogen in the exit gas so it's very simple that will be 56.405 divided by 0.79 that is equal to 71.40 kg moles this is the amount of air which is used in the process now now we can do all calculations the amount of liquid lead amount of liquid lead that is equal to 0.897 kg moles well if you are interested in obtaining in kg just multiply 0.897 into 207 that is the molecular weight of lead liquid slag liquid slag the problem says all fio and sio2 they form a slag so feo 2.778 and sio2 1.667 
in kg moles. So, now we have to determine amount of coke also. So, amount of coke amount of coke simply we add the carbon oxide and find out from there that is equal to 21.21 kg moles and if you like that is equal to 254.52 kg. So, now we have done complete material balance. Now we are in a position to perform heat balance. So, I will summarize the material balance calculation. I will just summarize in the form of a block diagram, so that I can proceed for heat balance calculation. To my left hand side is the input and to my right is the heat output. So, input now is ZNO 6.173. Mind you, this is for 1000 kg concentrate or 1000 kg center. Lead oxide 0 0.897. So, FeO that is equal to 2.778. SiO2 that is equal to 1.667 and the input temperature I am taking at 1100 Kelvin that is the sinter enters the zinc blast furnace at 1100 Kelvin and normally the sinter roasting process is integrated with the uh, blast furnace uh, uh, smelting for zinc. So, the temperature is this, up this particular order plus air, the amount of air is 71.40 and for the sake of calculation, I am taking air is supplied at 298 Kelvin. Next input is coke. Coke amount is 21.21 kg moles and we are taking it is supplied at 1100 Kelvin. So, mind you in the initial statement of the problem, I have not provided the temperatures, now I am giving the temperatures. Now, the exit gas Now, exit gas, it is not the exit gas, again I am repeating out of the furnace, but it is the gas which is producing above the heart level. So, we have zinc vapor, its amount is 6.173, mind you they are all in kg moles, CO2 7.070, CO 14.140. O2 4.40 and nitrogen 56.405 and the temperature of the discharge I am taking they are discharging at 1300 Kelvin. Now, the next which is forming is liquid lead. Liquid lead, its amount is 0 0.897 kg moles and the temperature is 1600 Kelvin. Then the liquid slag which is forming, that is FeO that is equal to 2.8. 778 and SiO2 1.667. Mind you, again they are in kg moles. And the temperature of its discharge is 1600 Kelvin. See now, also now 
this is what the calculations of material balance I have projected on this particular block diagram. The various temperatures are given. Now, what we have to do? We have to perform the calculation. Now, we should know at this at this stage what thermodynamic values you will be needing. Okay. To solve this particular problem, I will be providing all the values because I have calculated the problem and I know what values are required. But as a beginner, when you attain to solve the heat balance problem, you have to be very, very clear what thermodynamic values you will be needing. Say, for example, in this particular case, zinc vapor is being produced. So, you have to use Cp value of zinc from 298 to its melting point, then latent theta fusion, then from melting point to the temperature of discharge of zinc vapor, that C p value. So, all those values you have to collect and then you should proceed to form the problem. You should proceed to have a solution of the problem. This is one example of zinc. Another example is the formation of slag. Now, here the F u S i o 2 is forming. Now, it is also known that and I also said at the time when I was taking thermochemistry lectures, I said that when the slag forms for example, F u S i o 2 or C o S i o 2, there is a heat of formation is also there and the then that heat of formation is a heat input, it is a positive. That means, it, it gives you some amount of heat to carry out the process. So, what I wanted to tell you is that these are the intricacy of the heat balance that you should know. Well, in all cases when suppose liquid is solid to solid no problem, but when there is a phase transformation then you should be very careful while calculating the heat content of the phase which is coming out of the reactor. So, that is a very important issue. Now, in the next what I am going to do? I have calculated for you the heat content values. So, immediately I will be writing the heat content at the temperature at which they are entering or leaving the system. So, you may be surprising or you may be thinking that it is very easy. No sir, it is not easy. Particularly when there is a phase change involves, then you must consider accordingly the latent heat of condensation or latent heat of vaporization whatever is the case over there. If the phases are forming or if there is slag is forming, there is a heat of formation of slag. So, these things are I think they are important part of the heat balance, otherwise it is just a multiplication. You take C p d t do 298 to from one phase and you get the heat content value. So, I thought this is an important thing. Now, you also need the heat of reaction value say minus delta H naught Z n O that means, this is the heat of formation value of zinc oxide that is equal to 83,500 kilo calorie per kg mole. Now, lead oxide minus delta H naught P B O that is equal to 52,500 kilo calorie per kg mole. They are given you at 298 Kelvin. So, our basis of calculation is also 298 Kelvin. Now, the basis of calculation basis of calculation of heat balance is 298 Kelvin. That means, those reactants which are entering at 298 Kelvin their sensible heat will be 0. Now, you need the heat content values. So, I am giving you the heat content value. Heat content value in kilo calorie per kg mole per kg mole. Now, for example, here H 1100 minus H 298 for Z n O for P B O for F E O for S I O 2 and for carbon since we have taken coke is a pure amorphous carbon. 
So, these values are for ZNO 9500 or lead oxide 10800 for FeO 10280 for SiO2 19940 for carbon 3320. So, these are the values of zinc oxide, lead oxide, FeO, SiO2 and carbon. So, other heat content values say H 1300 minus H 298, this is for zinc vapor, then CO2, then CO, this is equal to 36160, CO2 12010, CO 7460, N2 7500, oxygen 7873 and this is all as usual kilo calorie per kg mole minus 1. So, that is about this value. Now, H 1600 minus H 298 for liquid lead that is equal to 10110 kilo calorie per kg mole, then H 1600 minus H 298 for FeO that is equal to 11990 kilo calorie per kg mole and uh, H 1600 minus H 298 SiO 2 that will be 21100 kilo calorie per kg mole. Now, mind you in calculating the heat content SiO 2, it also undergoes several phase transformation tridimite, cristobalite. So, those things are to be taken care while calculating the heat content. Now, I have given you all the values. Now, let us calculate. So, the first thing is the heat liberated. Heat liberated. Now, I am calculating the heat liberated at 298 Kelvin and then I am adding the sensible heat of reactants or you can calculate the uh, heat liberated at, at 1100 Kelvin. So, heat liberated ZNO to zinc vapor and PBO to PB liquid. So, delta H not 298 for this given the values that is equal to 5, 6, 2, 5, 39 kilo calorie. Now, sensible heat of reactants, sensible heat of reactants that will be equal to 6.173 into 9500 plus 0 0.897 into 10800 plus 2.778 into 10 to 80 plus 1.667 into 19940. We taken out that will be 200 
six eight seven. That is the sensible heat of reactants. That is in kilo calorie. Now heat taken out by gases. Heat taken out by gases. All that you have to multiply by the uh, heat content multiplied by the moles. So this is equal to eight seven one. Two eight nine kilo calorie. Similarly, heat taken out by lead. Heat taken out by lead. That will be zero point eight nine seven into ten one one zero. That is equal to nine zero six nine kilo calorie. Then he taken on by slag. He taken by slag. You have to multiply by the moles, so that value will be equal to sixty-eight thousand four hundred and eighty-one kilo calorie. Similarly, there is the heat of formation. So, heat of formation, because here likely that FeO SiO two that forms only FeO SiO two, and heat of formation that is equal to one hundred and fifty-three kilo calorie per kg FeO. So this heat of formation that will be thirty thousand six hundred and two kilo calorie. So now we have done all the calculation. Now we can do heat balance. So let us do now heat balance. This is side is heat input. Heat input. So, in the heat input, first is the heat of reaction. Heat of reaction, and this heat of reaction is five six two five three nine. Then sensible heat. Two zero zero six eight seven. Then heat of slag formation. Heat of slag formation that is equal to thirty six zero two. So the total will be seven nine three eight. To eight, it's all in kilo calorie. That's all in kilo calorie. Now let us write down heat output. Heat out. So first is zinc vapor. That is carrying two two three two one six kilo calorie. Gases. Six four eight zero seven three kilo calorie. Lead nine zero six nine. Slag six eight four eight one. Then heat losses. Heat losses. I am adding ten percent of heat input. So that is equal to seven nine three eight two. So total heat output that is equal to ten two eight two two one. So what this calculation suggests? This calculation suggests that heat input heat input that is less than heat output.
So, we have to meet there is a heat deficiency and heat deficit we have to subtract. So, heat deficit will be 2, 3, 4, 3, 9, 3 kilo calorie. This is the heat deficit. Now, one way to meet the heat deficit is to preheat the air. So, one way to meet the heat deficit is to preheat the air. Now, the question comes what should be the preheat temperature? So, if you consider for example, average value of C p. So, if you consider average C p that is equal to 7.5 kilo calorie per kg mole degree Celsius, then I can find out preheat temperature. Preheat temperature that will be equal to 463 degree Celsius. That is your to M C P delta T. So, delta T will be equal to uh, 234393 divided by 7.5 into 71.4 plus 25. So, now this is what the preheat temperature you require that means you have to heat the air to this to meet the heat deficit and to a temperature of 463 degrees Celsius. Now, the question comes the preheating of the air. One option is clearly open to you that you employ additional preheating installation and do the preheating. Another option that is still there is to recover the heat because the exit gas is having a substantial amount of heat, but here you should be careful what is the amount of heat that is exiting. So, what we see from here say out of this a total heat the zinc vapor that is heat carried by zinc vapor heat carried by zinc vapor that is equal to 27 percent of the total output. Of this lag, the heat will not be available. Of the lag, the heat will not be available. Only now, the heat carried by the gases, now CO, CO2, O2 and N2 that will be available. But remember, the gases, a mixture of gases that zinc vapor, CO, CO2, N2 and O2, they are shock cooled in order to recover zinc. So, any amount of heat that is in the zinc vapor, it will not be available to you. Now, what we have done in the calculation, we have taken into account the exit gas temperature above the heart level. For the west heat recovery point of view, the temperature of the gas exiting the lead condenser, that is an important. Because when these gases, they exit the lead condenser, it will have substantial amount of CO because you have to maintain a certain amount of CO CO2 ratio in the entire blast furnace so that zinc vapor does not reoxidize. So, mind you, there is a very large amount of carbon monoxide there, and since carbon monoxide is a very good fuel, so one can utilize the potential energy of the CO by combustion of carbon monoxide. So, one way is that you have to say find or measure temperature of exit gas from lead condenser. And second, you have to see the amount of carbon monoxide in the exit gas. Now, one can evaluate the potential energy that is available if combustion of CO is carried out and the temperature of the waste gas that is exiting the condenser, the total amount of heat that will be available. Now, of course, here one has to integrate the heating and the, the waste heat recovery facility and combustion uh, facility of the gas exiting from the lead condenser to the preheating facility of the air. So, in fact, the total, the, the total knowledge of the process and how to preheat the temp, how to preheat the air to this temperature, it rather requires a close outlook of the temperature of the exiting gases and the amount of CO that will be available to you. So, an overall picture will give you how to attain 
air preheat temperature for example, in this calculation 463 degree. Not only attainment of this temperature is important, but also its integration with the furnace is equally important. Thank you.